Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU tells Italy and France to up reforms and trim deficit. European Union finds biggest spot power exchanges in market sharing case. And Clegg to push UK Liberal Democrat pro EU reform agenda. EU draft law on conflict minerals fails to satisfy campaigners, plus the EU Commission worried about Ukraine gas supply but not Europe's. Now John Holden sent an article from Sky News which is reporting that UK household energy prices are set to rise by around £640 per year, taking the average bill to over £2,000 a year. Apparently, Richard Lloyd, executive director of which, said, I don't think consumers know that this is heading their way and that the decision has already been made by the government. This is a massive chunk, potentially on everyone's bills. This means household bills are set to rise and rise for many people, very steeply for the foreseeable future. Sanctions and economic disruption with Russia over Ukraine can only exacerbate this situation, and we'll have more on that story later in today's show. It's Monday, the 17th of March. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. The EU tells Italy and France to up reforms and trim deficit. The European Commission is warning Italy and France that they must do more to tackle their high levels of public debt and reform their economies to reduce the risk of being hit with financial market turbulence. The 28-member bloc's executive arm said in a report published Wednesday that France's debt burden is rising and the country is projected to miss agreed debt reduction targets. So, whilst the Euro technocrats talk Turkey about economic recovery, the reality is that there are acute structural economic problems across the Eurozone, and that includes the UK too. State debts are out of control – bond market, which support national debts, are being supported by money printing. And when the interest rates are forced to rise by bond markets, many nations, including the UK, will be unable to service their debt obligations. European Union finds biggest spot power exchanges in market sharing case. The European Union Antitrust Regulator fined Europe's two biggest electricity exchanges for near-term delivery, as well as Romania's only power exchange. Nordpool Spot AS and Epex Spot SE were fined a combined €6 million Euros over a market-sharing agreement. The European Commission said in an emailed statement, Romania's power exchange operator Opcom SA was penalised €1 million Euros for imposing restrictions on foreign entrance to the country's wholesale electricity market, the EU said. So the reality of the situation is that the energy markets are dominated by very large corporations with huge lobbying power and influence. And whilst in this article the EU's left hand is trying to unravel the corporatocracy, other legislation from its right hand, i.e. state aid and green stroke carbon levies, play out to repackage the deal in favour of multinational corporate monopolies. Clegg to push UK Liberal Democrat pro-EU reform agenda. UK Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg will call for reforms to the European Union today in a speech designed to press his Liberal Democrat Party's pro-EU agenda in the run-up to May's European Parliament elections. Pro-Europeans are the real reformers now, Clegg will say in the speech in London, according to extracts released in advance by his office. For too long, as pro-Europeans, we've let the myths of isolationists dominate this debate. So Clegg and Miliband continue to talk about reform, repatriation and renegotiation between the UK and the EU. However, Barroso, Schultz and Vivian Redding, indeed even Angela Merkel, made the position very clear to David Cameron. The point being that there will be no renegotiation for the UK. 
On this show, we've talked many times about the EU ratchet mechanism and the legal framework known as direct effect. These tools, which essentially prevent any such repatriation and renegotiation, are documented here on our website in the Brave New Europe series of articles. So somewhere along the line, our general ignorance and malaise as a people here in the UK has allowed buffoons with suits, ties and celebrity smiles to beguile us into electing the incompetent and ignorant into office. If these loons can't even affect national policy on tobacco legislation or lavatory flushes, what hope do they think they have for any type of renegotiation with the EU? EU draft law on conflict minerals fails to satisfy campaigners. European firms are set to be offered a voluntary self-certification scheme to prove that their product's mineral components were not sold by warlords to fuel bloody conflicts under a draft EU law that falls short of campaigners' expectations. The proposed regulation, seen by Euroactiv, would set up a responsible importer scheme for firms excising due diligence over commodity supply chains, offering incentives ranging from EU public procurement contracts to funding possibilities for small and medium enterprises. But it would be limited to gold, tin, tungsten and tantalum. Now, politically, this ruling works in conjunction with other aid, investment and regulatory legislation which relate to the African continent. For a more detailed examination, search our site for Africa. There is a huge volume of coverage of the legislation that has been put in place over the last three to four years. And, of course, we have covered much of the European Union's clandestine project to involve itself in the creation of the African Union. EU Commission worried about Ukraine gas supply, not Europe's. The European Union policymakers are concerned about the risk of gas shortages in the Ukraine, but there is no immediate threat to supplies in Europe, where stocks are high after a mild winter, Energy Commissioner Gunther Ottinger said on Tuesday. Well, Russia is the EU's biggest gas supplier, providing around a quarter of its demand. Around one-third of Russia's gas is exported through Ukraine, which itself also relies heavily on Russian imports to meet its own demand. EU energy ministers meeting in Brussels on Tuesday held talks on the energy consequences of turmoil in the Ukraine. Of course, developments over the weekend are beginning to overtake us, and President Obama seems to have painted himself into a fixed political position by condemning Russia and stating that the USA will never recognize Crimea as an independent state. Whilst stocks of Russian gas might be high in Europe, there is no such storage facility here in the UK. Ask any Transco engineer and they'll tell you that Russian gas gets piped in directly to the UK. Let's read between the lines a little. William Haig and indeed David Cameron appear indifferent to Russia and are clearly holding stance with the USA. Surely that is not in the interest of the people of UK. Well, that is until you consider that the UK government is busy selling fracking licenses across the UK for the controversial exploitation of shale gas. As part of its behind-closed-doors strategy to figure out how in hell it's going to pay down an almost £5 trillion national debt, disrupted supply chain with Russia massively increases the value of those contracts. Now remember, visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. And join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>